H-E-L-L-O. The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with The Sun Will Be Up in the Morning. <laughs> Today, ladies and gentlemen, the word jello means more than it ever did before. Today, it not only stands for jello, America's favorite gelatin dessert, it also means jello puddings. Those three swell, ready prepared puddings that have now been added to the popular jello family. Both jello and jello puddings are unsurpassed for rich, tempting flavor. Both are easy and inexpensive to serve and delightfully good. And both bear that famous name, jello, a name that stands for tops in quality. A name that spells extra enjoyment and complete satisfaction. As you know, Jell-O is a trademark, the property of General Foods. So be sure to mention it whenever you ask the grocer for Jell-O puddings or any of Jell-O's six delicious flavors, strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, or lime. And by the way, if you haven't enjoyed strawberry or raspberry Jell-O recently, do so real soon. Because now they taste better than ever. Each has a new improved flavor obtained by using a natural flavor base artificially enhanced. And that's what gives those two popular flavors that rich, distinctive Jell-O goodness, the goodness that made Jell-O America's favorite gelatin dessert. The sun will be up in the morning, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this being the hottest week of the year in Southern California, we bring you a man who can hardly stand it in his long underwear, Jack Benny. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm, it itches. Uh, Jello, Jello again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, uh, Don, let me tell you about my underwear. I don't care what the thermometer says. I'm strictly a calendar man. When the swallows return to Capistrano, my longies come back to me. <laughs> but you're right, Don. It has been a terribly hot week. Why, in the valley where I live, it was sweltering. Well, everybody's been complaining about the heat in Beverly Hills, too. Although, when I woke up yesterday morning, there was a little red man with a tail and a pitchfork sitting at the foot of my bed... And he said, uh, this is nothing, buddy. <laughs> I didn't like him calling me buddy. Uh. <laughs> anyway, this has really been torrid weather. Well, Jack, the only thing to do when it's like this is just sit back and take it easy. Take it easy? Why, Don, this is the busiest week I've ever had. And you know what my schedule was today, don't you? No, what? Well, at 4 o'clock, I did our first Jell-O broadcast. Then I had to rush over and do the Screen Guild program then home to dinner, then back here to do this repeat Jell-O show, and immediately afterwards, I've got to do the second program for the Guild. My goodness. And at 11 o'clock, I've got to emcee the opening of that new chili bowl in Tarzana. <laughs> I tell you, Don, if it wasn't for vitamin B1 and the cigarette Phil's drummer gives me, I doubt that I'd be able to carry on. <laughs> well, really, I... No, really, really, Don, if it's... I'm not kidding, that, that vitamin B1 sure helps. <laughs> vitamin B1? Well, do those pills really help you, Jack? Oh, they're marvelous, and how they pep you up. Why, Don, you remember how I used to walk in my sleep night after night? I sure do. Well, now I run like a deer. <laughs> <laughs> and, Don, I owe it all to vitamin B. Oh, Jack, you and your pills. Oh, hello, Mary. Pills to go to sleep, pills to wake up, vitamin B, vitamin D, throat gargle, cough syrup. All right. Your bathroom looks like a sale at Sontag. <laughs> now, wait a minute, Mary. All the stuff I've got in my medicine chest, I have good use for. Oh, sure. Why, Don, he's got everything from corn plasters to toothache drops. Well, what's wrong with that? Your teeth will never ache again, brother. <laughs> Now, listen, Mary, there's no use being silly and you can stop with those gags because I haven't got false teeth. Then why is it you never let people slap you on the back? <laughs> because I'm tender, that's why. To hear you talk, you'd think I... W oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Boy, have I got a pip for you. 
How bad? Get a load of this one. I made it up myself. What's the... This will kill you, Jackson. <laughs> All right, get to it. What's a twack? A twack? I don't know, Phil. What's a twack? It's something a twain one's on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hotter than the weather tonight, folks. Yeah, it's too hot for that kind of stuff, if that's what you mean. Say, Jackson, wasn't that a scorcher this week, though? Sure was. Why, in Beverly Hills, it was just like an oven. Well, you live close to Santa Monica. Why didn't you go down to the beach? Oh, I was too busy. Yeah, Jack had to stay home and take care of his lemonade stand. <laughs> it's not my lemonade stand. A couple of children came to the door and asked if they could sell lemonade on my front lawn. What do you expect me to do, turn those little kids down? No, but you didn't have to make them sign a 99-year lease. <laughs> Oh, quiet. Now, Mary, I've got a very tough schedule today with all my broadcasts, so don't annoy me. Oh, that's right, Jackson. I read where you're doing the Screen Guild show today, too. Kind of a tough grind, ain't it? You said it. If it wasn't for vitamin B1. Don't boy. listen to him, Phil. He's got a pill for everything and all kinds of medicine. All right. Jack thinks there's always something the matter with him. Oh, a hypodermiac, eh? Hey? <laughs> hypodermiac? <laughs> That's hypochondriac, and I'm nothing of the kind. I just believe in taking precautions. Well, I go to a doctor twice a month for a checkup, whether I feel bad or not. Well, that's the silliest thing I ever heard of. Oh, yeah? Now, take me. I've never been to a doctor in my life. Well, don't go, brother. You've got a shock coming. <laughs> no kidding, Phil. No, Phil, really, did you ever take a good look at yourself in a mirror? Yes, and I'm gorgeous. <laughs> oh. Well, I should have had my head examined for asking that one. Hey, Jack. What? Here comes anemic on the outside. <laughs> oh, yes. Hello, Dennis. How do you feel? I'm fine, thank you. Say, Mr. Benny. <laughs> have you heard this one that's going around? What's a twat? <laughs> Oh, you too, eh? All right, Dennis, what's a twack? Mr. Harris won't tell me. Must be risque. <laughs> well, he told me that bright answer, so for your information, Dennis, a twack is something a train runs on. That's Twain! Twain! <laughs> you root my gag. <laughs> All right, Phil, I rooted. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say, Dennis, I meant to, uh... Dennis, I meant to ask you, you didn't forget to go down and register last Wednesday, did you? No, I was there, but I don't get it, Mr. Benny. What's it for? What's it for? Dennis, you signed up for conscription in a national emergency. If you're drafted, you get a year's training, your room and board, and $21 a month. $21 a month? Yes, sir. I'll take it up with my manager. Your manager has nothing to do with this. Say, hey, Phil, you registered, didn't you? Yeah, and so did all the boys in my band. That's swell. That is, uh, everybody but my guitar player. Oh. Why, is he, is he over 35? No, he made up that joke about the twack. <laughs> well, uh, they won't take him because that automatically makes him a moron. <laughs> Say, um, uh, Dennis... Yes, please? Hmm. We're about ready for a song. Have you got something nice prepared for us? Yeah, I'm gonna sing Trade Wind. <laughs> That's Trade Wind. Stay away from Harris. Sing, kid. Phil, why don't you buy a new joke book? <laughs> Where the trade winds play, 
music was everywhere. Flowers were in her hair. Under an awning of silvery bough, we traded balls the night that I sailed away. That love has made Oh, trade winds Are they only made to break When it is made again I'll sail away again I'm returning, it won't be the same, she traded her name. was Twaid Wind, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, that was terrific. Thank you. Your voice positively thrilled me. All right, Don. Don. Oh, Jack, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Don. Don, Dennis's voice positively thrilled me. Okay. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the next time you won to your neighborhood grocer, be sure to ask him for a package of tempting and appetizing Jell-O. Jell-O, that's right. It is not only economical and easy to make, but comes in six delicious flavors. Swing it, kid. So always look for the big wet letters on the box. They spell Jell-O. J-E-W-A-W-A-O. There. Darn you, Jack Benny. Now, now, Don, that was a real cute idea of mine. And I'll tell you one thing. Anytime you get a novelty and you don't take advantage of it... Answer the phone, Mary. Okay. And you don't take advantage of it. You're silly. Hello? It's... Yes? Yes, Mr. Sanders. He's right here. For you, Jack. Mark Sanders of Paramount. Oh, my director. Having a little more trouble with him. Hello? Yes, Mr. Sanders. Well, now, look. We've been all through that before, and I don't want to be stubborn, but my name has got to be first on the screen. I don't care what that worm said. <laughs> He's in New York, and I'm here. Take care of the local boy. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Sanders, that's my ultimatum. So think it over. Goodbye. What's the matter, Jack? Oh, it's that picture I just finished with Fred Allen. Allen wants his name first. Quite a ham, huh? Quite a ham. Don, you don't know what that guy Allen went through to try and be better than I am in the picture. Why, he studied his lines all night long. He hired four or five extra writers. He took dramatic lessons. Why, he even bribed the cameraman to try and make him look better than me on the screen. And for what? <laughs> A lot of good it did him. Yeah, if he thinks he's going to steal that picture from Rochester, he's nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to steal it from anybody. You know what burns me up? I give the best years of my life to Paramount. Incidentally, Jack, I do the Maxwell House program with Mary Martin, your leading lady in the picture, and she had a lot of nice things to say about you. Oh. Well, Mary is an awfully sweet girl, and she's swell to work with. Thanks. I don't mean you. <laughs> I'm talking about Mary Martin. You know, she's from Weatherford, Texas. Are you acquainted with Miss Martin, Phil? Jackson, there ain't a gal in, from, or passing through that state. I don't know. <laughs> The only one you know is Galveston Gertie. <laughs> Always bragging, huh? Say, Mr. Benny, what? I've never been in Texas. Are the girls really so beautiful down there? Yes, they are, Dennis, and there are thousands of them, each one prettier than the other. Then why do cowboys always sing such lonesome songs? <laughs> They're, uh, 
They're trying to fool us, Dennis. They, they don't want any competition. But getting back to Mary Martin, I really made an impression on that girl. Why, do you know in the picture she sings a chorus of My Heart Belongs to Daddy, and she sings it right to me. See, I love that part where she looks at me and goes, Dad, 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 Dad. She hates to say it, huh? <laughs> Go on, she loves it. <laughs> well, anyway, you'll see it on the screen. <laughs> Say, Phil, I don't want to give any away any more of the plot, so how about ripping through a band number in your own inimitable, thank heaven, style? <laughs> okay, Jackson, we're going to play a... Who cares? Play, play. <laughs> Wait a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I listened to your program last Sunday, and I resent all the slurs cast upon my name. Slurs? Who are you? Sure, I'll J. Banal. Goodbye. <laughs> I bet I know what that J stands for. Play, Phil. <laughs> Was the World is in My Arms, played by Phil Harris and his Gypsy Orchestra. Gypsy meaning, if he calls that an orchestra, it's a gypsy. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's almost as bad as the twain on the twack, isn't it, Phil? Bad nothing. That's a Lulu. <laughs> oh, fine. How much you want for that gag, Jackson? Oh, Phil, I couldn't sell it. I could. I said sell. <laughs> You can have the gag for nothing, Phil. Say, Don, as I told you before, I've got to rush over and do that Screen Guild broadcast, so maybe I better run along now and get everything set. Are you directing it? No, Ernst Lubitsch will be there, but I'm doing a dramatic play with Claudette Colbert, uh, Basil Rathbone, and Edward Arnold. You're in pretty fast company, ain't you, Joe? <laughs> Tune in, Mo, and you'll find out. <laughs> Well, I'm going to run along, Don. Uh, Rochester's waiting downstairs for me in the Maxwell. The Maxwell? I thought you traded that car in last week. Well, I intended to, Phil, but I decided to wait. <laughs> Tell him what really happened. Never mind. What was it, Barry? Well... Look, I'm very busy. If you think I'm going to hang around and hear you run down my car again, you're crazy. Goodbye. So long, Jack. <laughs> Gee, that guy's burned up. What happened, Mary? Well, it was this way. I was over to Jack's house last Monday, and I finally persuaded him to trade in the Maxwell. Uh-huh. Well, anyway, after a long argument, we got in the car and started toward Hollywood. And all the way over, Jack was changing the car. Rochester, take it easy. Okay, boss. You know, I hate to trade this car in, Mary. Now, don't back out. Say, Jack, what kind of allowance do you think they'll give you on the Maxwell? Well, if I can get $700... <laughs> no, really, I'll be happy. $700? Yes, this car's got a lot of extras on it. Seat covers, radio, cigarette lighter. Don't forget the angle. We ain't got no brakes. <laughs> the brakes are all right. Boy, what a rattle trap. It's not a rattle trap. Miss Livingston's right, boss. This car vibrates so much I can't keep my socks up. <laughs> Your socks. All right, our socks. <laughs> now, 
That's more like it, and stay out of them. Say, Jack. What? Which one of the new models are you going to look at? Oh, I don't know, Mary. I can't make up my mind whether to get a Rio or a Chandler. A Rio or a Chandler? Yes. Say, Jack, did you read the news? What news? Queen Isabel is that way about Columbus. <laughs> now, cut that out. Don't be funny. Why, Jack, they haven't made a Rio or a Chandler in years. They haven't. I told him that till I was black in the face. <laughs> Well, I'll find a good car. Now, Rochester, turn down here on Hollywood Boulevard. We'll come to Automobile Row. Okay. Uh-oh. Now what? I should have stopped there. Well, you're just lucky that a policeman... Did... Oh, fine. Stop the car, Rochester. I knew this would happen. Is that a policeman coming toward us? It ain't an usher from the Pantages. <laughs> now, let me do the talking, Rochester. What can you say without your rider? I'll get by, don't worry. <laughs> oh, uh, good morning, officer. Hey, don't you know it's against the law to turn left on a red light? Yes, but... Uh, I'm gonna give you a nice little ticket. But, officer, I came to Hollywood to trade in my car. This car? Yes. Well, you haven't got a minute to lose. Drive on, buddy. <laughs> Thanks. Go ahead, Rochester. Wise guy. Got a good mind to go back and tell that cop a thing or two. Now, Rochester, there's the Packard agency over on your left. Well, we can go right by there. Now, wait a minute. Pull into the service entrance. Why, boss, are you thinking about buying a new Packard? I certainly am. There's vitamin B for you. <laughs> it's not the pills. I just feel like buying a Packard. Stop the car. Come on, Mary, you too, Rochester. I want you to help me pick one out and get a good trade. Okay. Rochester, put that door back on. Quick, quick, before the man comes. Quick, quick, quick! There. Come on, let's go in the showroom. Wow, look at these beautiful new cars. Good morning. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm in the market for a car. Phaeton, Payton, or Schmayton? <laughs> Well, I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, really interested in a convertible coupe. I see. Uh, right over here is our 1941 model. It has the automatic top. Oh, yes. You just press a button and the top goes up and down. Well. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your top does that without a button. <laughs> oh, no, don't, it not now, mister, I'm very much interested in the convertible. That is, if we can get together on a trade. I see. <laughs> see. Well, what year car are you driving now? Is it a 1940? No. 1939? No. 1938? No. 1937? I'm going out to eat. This will take all day. <laughs> As a matter of fact, mister, it's a 1921 Maxwell. I beg your pardon? I said it's a Maxwell. Is that a Swiss movement? <laughs> no, it's a Maxwell car, and it's in excellent condition. Well, I'll have to have it appraised. Oh, Mr. Vandermeer. Yeah, Mr. Collins. Will you go outside and appraise this gentleman's car? It's a, it's a, uh... It's a Maxwell. You can't miss it. It says, beat me, daddy, eight to the bar. <laughs> Now, please, I'm in a hurry. Okay, okay. The car is really in swell shape, Mr. Collins. It's always been chauffeur-driven. What's the mileage on it? Well, the speedometer says 12,000 miles. You can't go by that, boss. When the speedometer reads 50, we're going 30 miles an hour. Rochester. And when it reads 60, it's half past two. <laughs> Rochester, there's no time to be flippin'. Uh, well, Mr. Collins... How much will Liz Packard cost me? Well, of course, that depends on how much we can allow you on your old car. Here comes Mr. Vandermeer now. Good. Oh, Mr. Vandermeer, did you look over this gentleman's car? Yes, sir. Well, what do you think? I didn't like it! <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't be too hasty. Did you crawl under my car and take a good look? Not me. I've got a wife and kids. <laughs> Not so dangerous. 
Now, Mr. Collins, I think my Maxwell is worth $700. And he doesn't drink. Quiet. Now, what do you think, Mr. Collins? Well, the best I can possibly offer you on such an old car is $40. $40? Now, Jack, don't argue about it. You're getting a break, believe me. Well, what do you think, Rochester? Is $40 fair? Boss, that's fair. Just unbiased, liberal, generous, and hand me a dictionary. <laughs> Oh, all right. I'll get my checkbook. How much do I owe you, Mr. Collins? Let me see. With all the standard accessories, less your $40 allowance, that comes to $1,450. $1,450, eh? Okay, I'll make out the check. Packard Motor Company, $1,400. Hey, and... what will I do with the old Maxwell, Mr. Collins? Nothing you can do. Just take it out and junk it. And 50... Junk it? What did you say about the Maxwell, Mr. Collins? I said we'll have to junk it. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Collins. That car's got a lot of life in it yet. Oh, make out the check, Jack. Mary, you can't take that little old Maxwell out and junk it. Just throw it on a pile of old scrap metal. Oh, Jack. No, no, he can't do it. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, I didn't mean to... I don't care what you meant, Mr. Collins. I heard you tell that man to junk my car. Well, I won't stand for it, you hear? I won't stand for it. What are you going to do, boss? We're getting in that Maxwell, Rochester, and we're going home. I'm sorry, Mr. Collins. The deal is off. Come on, Mary. Junk, my little Maxwell. Must have been mad to even think of parting with it. Get in the car, Mary. Okay. All right, Rochester, let's go. Yes, boss. Oh, boy, listen to that motor purr. I should have had my head examined for wanting to trade in little Maxie. There goes the tire, boss. Dog got it at the third one this week. Trouble, trouble, nothing but trouble with this piece of junk. Someday I'm going to trade it in. Friends, how would you like to plan and prepare almost 1,100 meals a year? Well, if you're the average housewife, that's exactly what you do. And no doubt about it, thinking up new ideas for that many menus is no small job. So just to help out a bit, we'd like to pass along a quick, easy suggestion for tomorrow's dessert. It's called Cardinal Pear Mold, and it's a combination of delicious pears and bright red cherry jello. Better yet, it's as simple as it is satisfying. To make it, just prepare one package of cherry jello, as you usually do, and add one-eighth teaspoon of powdered ginger. Then mold, and before serving, garnish with sections of fresh or canned pears. The result is a bang-up good dessert, one that everybody will like, and one that costs almost nothing to make in the way of effort or expense. So for tomorrow night's dinner, try this grand new Jell-O idea, Cardinal Pear Mold, a vivid blend of sweet, juicy pears and rich crimson cherry Jell-O. This is the last number of the third program in the current Jell-O series, and we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time. Hey, Mary, let's go home and hear Jack Screengill show. Did you say he's going to do a dramatic sketch with Claudette Colbert? Yeah, what does he want anyway? Good night, folks. J-E-L-L-O News for Thrifty Housewives. Log cabin syrup for less money. All three sizes now selling at lowest prices in history. Ask your grocer about his new low prices. Remember, same luscious log cabin syrup. Same high quality, same mellow flavor. Only the price has changed. Tomorrow, buy log cabin syrup at the new low price. The lowest ever. This is the National Broadcasting Company.